Thank you, uh, uh, Chairman Thornberry and Ranking Member Smith. For the members of the committee, uh, before I do get into my short statement here, I do want to highlight to you we have put a map uh, at your at each of your spaces here. It is there. There is there is coverage on both sides. Uh, you'll see the backside really focuses in a little bit on the Iraq and Syria piece there. That red kind of blotches kind of highlight where we think uh, uh, ISIS is located currently. Um, Chairman Thornberry, Ranking Member Smith, distinguished members of the committee, good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to appear here today to discuss the current posture and state of readiness of the United States Central Command. I come before you today on behalf of the outstanding men and women of the command, military, civilians, and contractors, along with our coalition partners from nearly 60 nations. Our people are the very best in the world at what they do, and I could not be more proud of them and their families. Without question, they are the strength of our Central Command team. I've been in command at CENTCOM for about a year now. It's been an incredibly busy and productive period. Over the past 12 months, we've dealt with a number of significant challenges in Iraq and Syria, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Yemen, Egypt and the Sinai, the Bab el Mendeb Strait, and elsewhere throughout our area of responsibility. We are making progress in many areas, but much, much work remains. We are also dealing with a range of malign activities perpetrated by Iran and its proxies operating in the region. It is my view that Iran poses the greatest long-term threat to stability in this part of the world. Generally speaking, the central region remains a highly complex area, widely characterized by pervasive instability and conflict. The fragile security environments, which reflect a variety of contributing factors, including heightened ethno-sectarian tensions, economic uncertainty, weak or corrupt governance, civil wars, and humanitarian are exploited by violent extremist organizations and terrorist groups such as Al-Qaeda and ISIS. These groups have clearly indicated their desire and intent to attack the U.S. homeland, our interests abroad, and the interests of our partners and allies. At the same time, the central region is increasingly crowded with external nation states, such as Russia and China, uh, who are pursuing their own interests and in attempting to shift alliances within the region. <clears throat> the point that I would emphasize to you is that while there may be other more strategic or consequential threats or regions in our world, today the central region has come to represent the nexus for many of the security challenges our nation faces. And most importantly, the threats in this region continue to pose the most direct threat to the U.S. homeland and the global economy. Thus, it must remain a priority and be resourced accordingly. We sincerely appreciate this committee's continued strong support, and particularly as it pertains to our budget requests and the funding provided, not only to CENTCOM, but across the Department of Defense. We could not do what we do on a daily basis without that support. Meanwhile, the team at U.S. Central Command remains appropriately focused on doing what is necessary to protect our national interests and those of our partners. Our strategic approach is very straightforward. Prepare, pursue, and prevail. And I'll explain what I mean by that. We prepare the environment to ensure an effective posture and strong relationships across the region. We actively pursue opportunities to strengthen relationships and support our interests. And when we do put our forces into action, we prevail in our assigned missions. I would also point out, to you, point out to you that today, to the credit and professionalism of our armed forces and coalition partners, we are executing campaigns in the central region with significantly fewer U.S. forces on the ground than in previous years. As you're seeing clearly demonstrated in Iraq and Syria, Afghanistan, Yemen, and elsewhere throughout our area of responsibility, we have adopted a by, with, and through approach that places a heavy reliance on indigenous forces. While this approach does present some challenges and can be uh, more time consuming, it is proving effective and is likely to pay significant dividends going forward. Indigenous, for par indigenous force partners continue to build needed capability and capacity, and they are personally invested in the conduct of operations and thus inclined to do what is necessary to preserve the gains they've achieved going forward. We also have a vested interest in ensuring increased st stability and security in the strategically important central region. To this end, I will close by highlighting three areas 
where I do believe if we apply the appropriate amount of energy and effort, we can and will have a lasting positive impact in this part of the world. First, we must restore trust with our partners in the region, while at the same time maintaining the strong trust of our leadership back here in Washington. The fact is we cannot surge trust in times of crisis, and we must do what is necessary now to assure our partners of our commitment and our staying power. Second, we must link our military objectives and campaigns as closely as possible to policy objectives and to our other instruments of national power. In other words, we must align our military objectives and soft power capabilities with desired national and regional strategic end states, recognizing that if we don't do this, we risk creating space for our adversaries to achieve their strategic aims. Finally, we must make sure that we are postured for purpose in this region. We must have credible, ready, and present force coupled with foreign military sales and foreign military financing programs that serve to build and shape partner nation capability in a timely and effective fashion. Much is at stake today in the central region. We recognize this fact, and I assure you that the CENTCOM team stands ready and willing to do what is ever necessary to protect our national interests in the interests of our allies and partners. Let me close by thanking this committee once again for the st strong support that you continue to provide to the world-class team in United States Central Command, and particularly to our forces located forward in the region. As I said at the outset, the 80,000 plus soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, and civilians that make up the command are truly the very best in the world at what they do. And I could not be more proud of them and their families. <coughs> And I know that you are proud of them as well. Thank you once again. I look forward to answering your questions this morning.